or rise up on our feet as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you for your glory. Because we know you are worthy. And that's why we come to you, Lord, to adore you and to worship you. Lord, we pray that our praises, our worship, adoration will be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name. Oh Lord, for the outpouring of your blessing, we give all the glory, all the praises to you. Accept our praises in Jesus' name. And tonight, as your people honor you, as they lift up your name, as they praise your name, in this place and in all the various locations, thousands of people gathering together and offering praise to you as the praises are coming to you the power of praise will walk in our midst you will still continue to deliver the oppressed you'll continue to heal the sick you'll continue to draw people to yourself bless your people tonight lord in jesus name we pray Thank you very much. You can sit down. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 21, These people have I formed for myself. You belong to God, you don't belong to Satan. They shall show forth my praise. That means then, as a child of God, born again, cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, you are part of the family of God. There is one purpose why you are here in the kingdom. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9, it tells us who we are and what we do and why we are in the kingdom. But she is a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. Why? that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. He says, we are a chosen generation. God has chosen you. A royal priesthood. You are a priest and a king in the sight of the Lord. And holy nation. You have been washed and cleansed and made holy, a peculiar people. And now you see the reason why all those things have taken place, that ye, you in particular, whatever others do, whatever others fail to do, that you in particular should show forth the presence of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. As we look at the message the power of praise. I divide to three parts. Number one, the commandment to praise God. Two, the content of our praise to God. The content. What do we say in our praise to the Lord? The content of our praise to God. Number three, conquering through praises to God. I know you are delivered already. I know you are blessed already. I know you are a champion already. But if there is still any sin remaining during the time of the testimony, every testimony you hear that God did this, it will be reproduced in your life. As these, if, as we have women that have married for a long time, and he said, I didn't have any child before, but then I was prayed for. And see the baby. While you are looking at their baby, God will give you a miracle baby. While you hear the testimonies of other people, those testimonies will be reproduced in your life, in your family. Number one, the commandment to praise God. Psalm 22, reading from verse 23. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All ye the seed of Israel. Here it says, there is no exception. 
There is nobody that will say, I'm not interested in this one. This is not my stuff. I just want this or that. As for praising God, count me out. He said, oh. He said, all the seed of Jacob, all ye the seed of Israel, glorify him and praise him. Psalm 102. In Psalm 102, verse 18. 102 verse 18 This shall be written for the generation to come And the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord That covers you You have been created by the Lord And then recreated again by the Lord Because of the new creation You are to praise the Lord Psalm 111 That's 111 from verse 1, praise ye the Lord is a command. And a command is to be obeyed. If we don't obey the command, we're doing something wrong. It says, praise ye the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright. This is the assembly of the upright. Those who are saved. Those who are children of God, like you, it says, in the congregation, the works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. When you praise the Lord, you make the wonderful work of the Lord his healing. His deliverance, His provision, His salvation, His sanctification, His will, His power to be remembered when you are praising the Lord. It says, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He has given meat unto them that fear Him. He will ever be mindful of His covenant. He has showed His people the power of His works that she may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of his hand are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto his people. He has sent redemption to you. That's why we're praising him. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and, uh, give me the next word, reverend is his name. That's why in this church, we don't use reverend for our own pastors, for our own leaders. It belongs to God. Holy and reverend is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, a good understanding have all they that do his commandments, his praise endureth forever. Psalm 112 from verse 1, praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. We will praise the Lord, and today you will praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 4. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 4. And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among the people, make mention that his name is exalted. Oh, you say, is it only in the Old Testament we are to praise the Lord? How about the New Testament? That is where we really praise the Lord. It's a lot to praise the Lord for the new covenant people. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 20. Ephesians 5 verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It says we give thanks always for all things. You will not say this is a small blessing. This is a small miracle. This is a small answer to prayer. For every sin, it says, give thanks unto the Lord. For all things. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. 
Philippians 4 verse 6, be careful for nothing, but in every sin, in every sin, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, it says, let your requests be made known unto God. And you know, sometimes, uh, because God has done this, and then you're still waiting for this to be done. And maybe what you're waiting for is even more important to your mind than what you say the Lord has done. You see, I was expecting one, two, three, and four. And the Lord has only done number one and number three. It remains number two and number four. You say, okay, I will wait until number two and number four, until they are done, before I come to praise the Lord. Look at Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise. When it looks like a sacrifice, I see if this looks like I'm dragging myself to go and praise the Lord. And then it says, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You will testify. And the people of God will rejoice because of your testimony. Point number two, the content of our praise to God. What am I praising God for? What are you praising God for? What are the things God has done? Let's look at Psalm 103. Psalm 103 from verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What's the content of our praise? His benefits. The things that he did for us, that benefited and profited our personal lives, our families, our church. Forget not all his benefits. And here are they, who forgiveth all thine iniquities. We we'll praise God for that, for salvation. In verse 3, and who healeth all thy diseases. Think of the diseases that have been healed in our midst, in the crusades, in the retreat, as we have gathered together. In all the locations where we are, and sometimes it comes to you, it comes to us by satellite. And it just reaches you there at the point of your need. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul. All the things that are within me, bless his holy name. Because he has forgiven all your iniquities, all your sins. He has healed all your diseases. Verse 4, who, who redeemeth thy life. From destruction, he saved you from destruction. He preserved your life. Why not for the preservation of the Lord on your life? You might have been in the grave by now. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfies thy mouth with good things? See the way you are now. You know, before the blessing of God came, you were anemic and, you know, uh, people thought you were going to die any time. But the blessing has come. And what you eat is benefiting you. It's like people are saying, do you ever have any problem in life? The way you are, the joy and the shining of your face. That's the goodness of God. He has satisfied your mouth with good things so that the youth is renewed like the eagles. You will praise the Lord. First Timothy chapter 1. In First Timothy chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 12. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord. Here's another person saying, I'm thanking the Lord. And we're asking him, what's the content of your praise? What are you thanking him for? He said, who has enabled me, energized me, empowered me. And then he said, for that he counted me faithful, he even put some trust in me, 
It says that I'm trustworthy. I'm thanking him for that. Putting me into the ministry. I'm even thanking him for that. For the ministry has given you. And for the effectiveness of your ministry. And for the results your ministry is producing in the lives of people. You should be thanking God. You should be thanking God. You have a ministry. And the Lord has specially put you there. Count your blessings and see what God has done through you. And then he said, who was before a blasphemer? He's saying, I'm not qualified for this. That's why I'm thanking God. And a persecutor. Can you imagine me becoming a producer? When I was a persecutor, this is not by merit, this is by mercy. That's why I was thanking God and injurious. Now I'm benefiting people. It's not an instrument of healing to people. It was an instrument of injury to people before this time. That's why I was thanking God. But I obtained mercy. I must thank God because I've obtained mercy. You know, the, the Old Testament says, If the Lord should mark iniquity, who will stand? And Paul must have been saying, If the Lord would have judged me at that time, I was running about just breathing out threatenings against the church of God. I would, not, I would have been forgotten, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly, in unbelief. And the grace, that's why I'm thanking God, the grace, the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus was exceeding abundant with faith and with love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying. And what the all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. That's why you need to thank God. He saved you from great, great sins. Luke chapter 1, the content of our praise. In Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. There is another person now. This is Zechariah. He was a, a Zechariah, rather. He was a, thanking the Lord, praising the Lord. And Zechariah says, Blessed be the Lord God. God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. He has visited us and has redeemed his people and has raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of David, his servant, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies. That's why he's thanking God, saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which is swear to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we've been delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Think about that. You don't have to wrap your Bible in a newspaper when you are going to church now. You just carry your Bible with confidence. So you go to serve the Lord. And you say, where are you going? I'm going to church. Which church are you going? Now you are not ashamed. There's no fear. You need to thank God. There are some people that sneak out to serve God. There are some people that will bend and bow and cover their Bible so that people will not know that they're serving God. But we, anything we want to do for the Lord, we do with open face, with courage, with boldness, fearlessness. We need to thank God for that. Then it says in holiness and righteousness before him. And you know, some people, they think you only thank God because you are healed. How about sanctification? He used to be a fellow that was all rough within. The Adamic nature was there. The stubbornness was there. The stony heart was there. And they see that, you know, the anger that was kind of stirring in the heart, although you didn't express it, the heat of anger within. But now, all this love, all this peace, some purity and gentleness and love, that now you wake up in the morning without anybody doing anything, you just begin to smile. The joy of the Lord. 
this man is saved this man is sanctified and the old habit of frowning everywhere unhappy with everybody for no reason everywhere all that is gone the attitude is changed we need to thank god for that serving god without fear in holiness and righteousness before him we can go to god now and there is no sin consciousness we need to thank god for that you know before in religion whenever we went to god we have to confess sin first sin consciousness we have to say lord i'm sorry i've done what i shouldn't have done I have not done what I should have done. Before we ask for anything in prayer, but now things are different because he has saved us from the hands of our enemies that we might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him. And you know there are some people before, many years ago, they are holy and righteous and moderate and self-denying during the Lenten season. And then when the Lenten season is over, then they resume again. But you say you serve him now in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. That's why Zechariah was blessing the name of the Lord. And we need to bless the name of the Lord for such a great experience that takes us from being a sinner and makes us now a saint. You will praise the Lord. 76, and thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest. Wasn't Zechariah happy, joyful, grateful to God that his own child, his only child, will be a prophet of the Lord? And if your child is serving God in the youth section, if your child is serving God in the children's section, it is something to praise God for. That's why Zechariah was praising the Lord. Thou child shall be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way, to give the knowledge of salvation unto, the, unto his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercies of our God, whereby the day spring from, from on high has visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet in the way of peace. The peace we enjoy. We need to thank God for that. Point number one is the commandment to praise God. Point number two is the content of our praise to God. Point number three, conquering through praises to God. Conquering, conquering, conquering through praises to God. In Second Chronicles chapter 20, we're reading from verse 1. Jehoshaphat was faced with a great problem, insurmountable problem. In verse 1, and it came to pass after this also, that the children of Moab, the children of Ammon, were them all the besides the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, there comes a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side Syria and behold the bean as a Zontema which is in Engedi and Joshua feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah and Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord even out of all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord a great problem confronting the king again a great problem confronting all the people of the king and the people of Judah because of that they declared a fast and they all came together to seek the face of the Lord to solve this problem a great problem indeed. Verse 5, Joshua stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are thou not God in heaven, the God in heaven? And rulest thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? 
and in thine hand is there not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee he has not given his request for us just exalting the name of the lord honoring the name of the lord just appreciating the nature the power the authority the might of the lord i doubt not our god would it drive out the inhabitants of the land? It's not telling God, this is what you did for us in the past. Before, because of what you did in the past, I know you will do this in the present. That's why we come to glorify God. That's why we come to praise Him. Because of what you did in the past. And in these past few years, you recollect, you recall, you remember what the Lord has done. And because of what he has done in the past, that's why you are having confidence in the present as to what he will do. Art not thou our God in verse 7, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gavest thee to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary. Therein, for thy name is such, see, we're here, and we have even built you a sanctuary. That was part of the testimony. Do you ever think about that as part of the testimony? Look around and see the sanctuary. I know you there. Look around those on Saturday. Look around you and see your own sanctuary there. While we see our own sanctuary here, that we are built to the glory of the name of the Lord. And he was praising God for that. That's part of the praise. And then saying, if when evil comes upon us as a sword and judgment or pestilence or farming, we stand before this house and in thy presence. For thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and hear. And now behold, the children of Ammon and Moab, Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them, and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will thou not judge them? Now it begins the prayer. First of all, he gave adoration to God, honor to God, exalting the name of the Lord for what he did in the past before he ever mentioned the problem. Many people rush into the presence of the Lord and they begin to talk about their problems. Why don't you just praise God first, adoration first. It says, so our God in verse 12, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what you do but our eyes are upon thee tonight your eyes are upon the lord and all judah stood before the lord with their little ones and their wives and their children then upon jahaziel the son of zechariah the son of beniah the son of jael the son of mataniah a levi the sons of the sons of asa came the spirit of the lord in the midst of the congregation if we give testimony aright, if we offer praise aright, if we allow the Spirit of the Lord to take over while we are praising the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and a great revelation will come to you during the time of praise. And then it says, and it said, Hacking ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and our King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord unto you, Be not afraid. And I say to you tonight, be not afraid. Not dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of seas. And ye shall find them at the end of the brook. Before the wilderness of Jeruel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. This one, you will not need to fight. Almighty God will fight it for you. 
set your sail, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Jude and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed, for tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord and worshipping the Lord and the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high and he rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa and they went forth Jehoshaphat's church and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. You believe already. I said you believe already. You are established. The works of your hand are established. Your family is established. Our church is established. Believe as prophets, so shall ye prosper. You will prosper. And when he had consulted, the people appointed singers unto the Lord. The people appointed singers unto the Lord. You know what? When they appointed them, nobody said, no, I don't want to sing. No, I don't want to praise the Lord. Count me out. I'm tired. They have appointed you. The people appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of what is they were not even praising the beauty of victory think about that they were not thinking of the success they knew the greatest attribute of God that he appreciates so much is holiness and so all these singers were appointed to praise the beauty of holiness. And they were told in that same passage as they went out before the army. So, and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, not before they praised, when they began to sing and to praise. When they began to sing and to praise. You know, some people say, I will not sing until God changed my situation. The situation will not change until you begin to sing and to praise. I don't want to praise God now. Tonight, they say they just want to praise God. I have a prayer request. I have a need. And I'm not ready now. All right, the other people can go and be praising the Lord. They can praise the Lord. God has done something for them. I'm still waiting for my own. It will not come until you begin to praise the Lord. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord said, ambush against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir. While we're praising God and singing, rejoicing here tonight, all your enemies are defeated. Yeah. Which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir. Instead of helping one another, they destroyed one another, and utterly to slay, to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came toward the watch, tower in the wilderness they looked unto the multitude and behold there were dead bodies falling to the earth and none escaped you have overcome any other challenge remaining tonight while we are praising the Lord while we are giving the testimonies all the problems are gone Acts chapter 25 chapter, Acts chapter 16 rather Acts chapter 16 Acts 16, I'm reading from verse 25. Acts 16, verse 25. Here we have Paul and Silas. 
and at, at midnight it was midnight for them naturally it was midnight experientially it was midnight because of the place where they were it was midnight there was no light of joy there was no light of victory they are beating them and their bodies were bleeding it was midnight and in that midnight of pain in that midnight of confusion in that midnight of questions without answer why me what have i done why we're serving the lord and we cast out the evil spirit from that lady and the people put us here this is the midnight of confusion we have questions there is no answer and at midnight paul and silas prayed and sang praises unto God. When you come to the midnight, and you don't know where to go, and there is no light, there is no revelation, there is no solution, and you don't know what you are going to do, begin to praise the Lord. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, that's how your mountains will move. And suddenly, while we're giving testimony tonight, suddenly, it's when we finish, you'll say, ah, why is that problem? Suddenly it has disappeared. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaking. Tonight, the foundations of prisons were shake. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. Tell your brother, your sister by your side, your bands are loosed. Your bands are loosed. You're free tonight, my brother. You're free tonight, my sister. Just as we are praising the Lord, while the brothers and the sisters are coming up here and they are praising the Lord, and you're just looking like this, while you and when that, when you say praise and you say hallelujah, with that hallelujah, your problems are gone. Yeah. Why didn't you rise up? Why didn't you rise up and say, Lord, I thank you? What a night! What a night! What a night! When praises will manifest power. Praises will break every yoke and praises will destroy every work of the devil. There's miracle more for you, more miracles for you, more deliverances for you. The joy of the Lord will fill your soul. Tonight is a night of praise. Tonight is a night of joy. Tonight is a night of singing, singing the praise of the Lord. Singing the praise of the Lord. As we tell what the Lord has done for us, He saved our soul. He delivered us from oppression. He healed our sicknesses. He touched our businesses. He has redeemed our life. He has broken our yoke. He has opened our prison doors. And the foundations of the prison, they are shaking. And because of all those things that are done, that's why we come here tonight wanting to praise, praise, and praise the Lord. Why don't you praise the Lord right now? Why don't you rejoice right now? Why don't you tell the Lord right now what the Lord has done? What the Lord has done? Are you saved? Thank Him for it. Are you healed? Thank Him for it. Are you delivered? Thank Him for it. Are you provided for? Thank Him for it. As he enabled you and put you in the ministry, thank him for it. As he done some marvelous and supernatural things for you, thank him for it. As a relative received the miracle, thank him for it. Praise him for it. As he filled you with the Holy Ghost, praise him for it. As he provided a job for you, praise him for it. As he got victory for you, praise him for it. As you conquer your enemies for you, you praise him for it. He inhabits the praises of his people. He inhabits the praises of his people. Praise him, honor him, exalt him, glorify him. Don't you remember what he has done for you? You need to be sickly. Now you are healthy. Praise him for that. Unemployed. Now you are employed. Praise him for that. 
you are ignorant of his salvation. Now you have the knowledge of his salvation. Praise him for that. Just touch your wife, touch your children, touch your daddy, touch your mommy. Praise him for it. Granted you victory. Praise him for it. Bless you. Praise him for it. For his provision, for his protection, for his power, for his joy, for his liberty, for his freedom, for the great things he has done. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise him. All ye that have breath, praise the Lord. Ye that fear the Lord. All ye seeds of Jacob and seeds of Israel, praise the Lord. Praise him. In happy is the praises of his children, of his people. Glorify him, honor him, exalt him. And then as we hear the testimonies tonight, you rejoice with them that rejoice. You are happy because the others are happy. You rejoice with those who rejoice. For the Lord has done for them. And while you rejoice on their behalf, then your own Jericho walls will be falling down. Then your own prison doors will be opening. Then the Moabites and the Ammonites and the people of Seir that came against you as you are facing the Lord tonight, then they will depart from you. That will can be in a church that recognizes that the most important is the life we live, the holiness we have, the sanctification we have, and what the sacrifice of Jesus Christ has done, giving us the purity and the holiness of heart and life. Praise him for that. He has not left us in ignorance. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise the Lord. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, let everything within you praise the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God, we thank you. How great and glorious you are. We exalt your name. We honor you. And we worship and adore you. Lord, you are great. We are not saying that because Israel said it. We know in our heart. We know it in our midst. We know it by what you have done. We know it by the testimonies around us. We know it because we ourselves, we have tasted of the goodness of the Lord. Lord, we declare once again, you are great, and we declare that in Jesus' name. You have chosen us. You have selected us. You have saved us. You have taken us out of the darkness of this world. You brought us to yourself. The joy we feel, the peace we have, the healing we have, the victory of our sin we have, the holiness we have, the purity of heart. You have given us, oh Lord, you are worthy of our praise. We praise your name. We glorify you. We honor you. And Lord, we pray our praises to be acceptable in your sight in Jesus' name. From now on, Lord, not only our leaves will praise you, our life also will praise you. Our actions will praise you. Our obedience will praise you. 
our commitment will praise you. Our labor will praise you. Our service will praise you. Our giving will praise you. Lord, everything we have, talent, time, skill, ability, voice, strength, energy, body, every, members, every member of our body, oh Lord, everything we have, we praise, glorify, honor you in Jesus' name. We praise you tonight. We praise you tomorrow. We we'll praise you every day for the rest of our lives. We'll be praising you. We'll be glorifying you. And Lord, we pray that your praise will never leave our lives in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, we pray you will inhabit the praises of your people in Jesus' name. In all the locations over there, over here, in the west, in the south, in the north, in the east, outside Nigeria, Francophone country, Anglophone country, everywhere, and then in UK, and then in Europe, in France, everywhere, and then in America, as all of us are praising the volume of praise, the volume of praise, ascending to the Almighty God tonight. Oh Lord, we pray you will rain blessings now. You will rain miracles now. You will rain your power down. As the princes are sending up, then the blessings of the Lord will be coming down. And everyone, 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 oh Lord, we pray, will taste a new power, a new authority, a new anointing, a new deliverance as a result of the princes tonight in Jesus' name. Confirm it, O Lord. Confirm it, O Lord. Confirm it, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, headquarters, amen. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him. 